Three and a half years ago, I got a new Westinghouse WGen 7500 generator, and I posted a review of that on YouTube. I said at the time I'd do a follow-up video, but over the last few years, I've only had two power failures of just a few hours each. So there's really not a lot to uh, go over in terms of my experience with it. It's performed perfectly during those times, and I do fire it up about every six to eight weeks to make sure it's ready. I do want to show you in this video some things that I do which I highly recommend for any generator, but specifically for this WGen. As you can see, I have it sitting here with a cover on it, and it's ready to go. And that's really important because when your power goes out, which could happen uh, hopefully during the day, but it can happen in the middle of the night or during a rainstorm, you don't want to be tripping over things, trying to get to your generator and trying to figure out where everything is. So let me show you some things that I do to keep this ready to roll. Keeping it covered obviously keeps it clean, but there's a lot more you need to do than that. This model comes with a battery charger, which you would plug into the wall, plug into the unit, and then it will charge the battery. This is where that's plugged in. But how often should you charge the battery? How do you know when it's full? Those things I can't answer. So instead, I went with a trickle charger, specifically a battery tender, which I've used for uh, a number of battery charging situations. You plug this into the wall. It comes with a small pigtail, which you attach to the battery itself. And I just have this little pigtail connected to each terminal, routed up here, and here's the connection to the wall. When I'm ready to use it, you just pull this connection off, and once it's disconnected, you can wheel the generator out. What does the battery tender do? It keeps the battery charged at the optimum level all the time. It only charges as needed, so it'll never overcharge the battery. So I highly recommend a battery tender or something similar so that when you need to start it, it's going to start. As important as having a charged battery is, you also need good fuel, and this can't be overstated. First, you want to keep your tank full. Why? Because in air, there's moisture. If your tank is half full of fuel, it's then half full of air, which has moisture. That's not good for the engine, for the carburetor, for corrosion purposes. So keep your tank full. You should use fresh gas. And you should treat your gas with a fuel treatment so that it stays fresh. I have always used Stable. There's other brands out there, but I found that when I treat gas with Stable, I can have it sitting around in a tank for about a year and it will reliably start the engine. Small carburetors like on this generator, also on lawnmowers, chainsaws, snowblowers, they just, they're not like a car. They just don't do well with older fuel and they will not start. I'm fortunate to have a gas station nearby that has ethanol free fuel, which is even better. So if you're able to get ethanol free fuel, do it. But even if you can't, just regular fuel with ethanol, treat it with stable, fill the tank. There's one other thing I wanted to mention about fuel, and that is you need to have some on hand. Aside from having the generator full, I try to keep at least two five gallon cans uh, filled, ready, treated with stable, ready to go. Because when we have had long power failures in the past, there's a line at the gas station you wouldn't believe. So it really helps to be prepared. One of the downsides of that is when you have all this fuel, you know, 15 gallons or so, and I mentioned, you know, it lasts for about a year. Well, then what do you do with it? Well, you put it in your car. Just dump it into your car. It'll run fine. And then fill these up with fresh fuel once a year. As you can see, I went with the no spill brand of gas can. These things are about $35. I'm um, here to tell you they don't work as great as advertised, and I've had plenty of spills with these to prove it. Um, another brand that I might try in the future is, I believe, called Shorecan, but those are over $50. So this stuff isn't cheap, but whatever you go with, definitely have fuel on hand for an extended power failure. Once you have it 
filled with fresh fuel, you want to run the engine. And I would recommend doing this every couple of months, every eight weeks or so. You don't want this generator just sitting for months and months or maybe a year or more, and then suddenly when you need it, it won't start. So by running it every couple of months, I usually run it for about 10 minutes. You're just verifying that the battery's good, the fuel's good, the engine starts, uh, nothing's going to get gummed up or seized up because it's just sitting idle. Also gets your oil moving, and you just know that when you need that generator, it's going to be ready to go. Now we mentioned oil. Uh, the manual mentions how often the oil is supposed to be changed. Even if you don't use it that much, it's a good practice to change the oil after a period of time. Some say once a year. I usually do it every two years just to keep things fresh. Since my generator is stored right next to the garage door, it's very easy to wheel it over and get it outside. In a power failure, the garage door is going to have to be opened manually, but today we'll just pop it open. This is where I keep my generator when it's running, and I just want to show you how I attach it to the panel. The transfer switch was put in 20 years ago. I don't think you're technically allowed to put them indoors anymore, like I have mine in a garage, but you should obviously never run your generator indoors. So I have a 25 foot long cable. It goes from the transfer switch right out the garage and I close the garage door. And that's always how I've used the generator here. Now as far as starting it, uh, you probably know this already, but I'm just gonna flip on the switch. The light lights up and now you can use the remote to get it started. And with the remote, you're just gonna hold the button for a second or two and it'll kick on. I let it run for about 10 minutes. It's nice and hot. It's important to let it cool before you put it back close to a wall. Uh, you don't want to have any problems with that. And obviously, you don't want to cover it until it's cool. So in summary, keep your battery charged. Keep your generator filled with fresh fuel that's been treated with a stabilizer. And run it every couple of months to keep everything lubricated. Well, this was a pretty easy test to do. But many times when there's a power failure, it's during a storm. And you can't run a generator out in the rain or snow. So how do you handle that situation? Check out my next video for the answer.